Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. This is another video on the Manufacturing at Home series, and this one is on the Rimfire Steel 22 caliber biathlon target. This is a scaled down version of the Olympic style biathlon target. It's designed for use at 50 feet, and it is designed for 22 caliber rimfire. As you can see here, and this is just some footage from my backyard, it sort of acts like a miniature plate rack and it's pretty simple. You shoot these five targets and then it's got a uh, pull cord reset. I make these and the backstory is my local shooting club has a great program on Friday nights for juniors. Anyone from 10 to 18 can come shoot. Costs, I think, $10 for the whole year, free ammo, uh, free use of really nice Anschutz rifles. Um, really an incredible opportunity. And I have a soft spot for it because I grew up shooting, but it was when I went to high school that I shot competitive small bore indoor with an Anschutz 1813, and it was just the, the best memories. I really loved it. So to see a club that gives so generously back to uh, the juniors like this is really cool. Uh, most of the time they shoot the uh, NRA, I think A17 style targets, but uh, some of the guys also do a biathlon training regiment, and what they do is they would pull out the full-sized MGM plate racks which if you're not in the shooting world, they are you know, a few hundred pounds, they're on wheels, but um, they're like six feet long, and they normally have a big six inch target for center fire pistol or, or even rifle, and they would replace those targets every time they wanted to use them with the little one inch homemade jobs that someone cut on a torch for them. And, and they were just happy to have a place to shoot. No one really wanted to complain, but I, I looked at these and I thought, let's, uh, let's see if we can do something better. So. That was a while back and you know one thing led to another i came up with this little design and they loved it and then um, they wanted a couple more and then some of the parents uh, and kids wanted to know hey can we pick up one of these to practice on our own um, and so it kind of took off from there um, but i have a lot of fun making them it's a fun little i call it sort of a side gig if you will and uh, what's nice about it is i can usually just run up parts when i've got free time or free capacity in the shop um, but what's really cool is it's a great example of manufacturing at home. Um, I make every single part of this target right here in the shop. Um, and it's a great use of a number of my machines. Obviously the Torchmate plasma cutter uh, cuts out all the plate as well as some of the 10 gauge steel. I use the Tormach CNC machine to do a lot of finish machining, uh, tapping, drilling, etc. And I use my Whitney punch press, which is a lifesaver. There are a ton of holes in this thing and uh, I would not have any interest in drilling all of them. So the punch press is, is, is awesome for this. And then finally, uh, welding. So what I thought I'd do is we do a little video series here and just simply walk through how they're made, um, sort of open kimono. So um, hopefully you guys can learn something. I'm guessing I will actually learn something from you guys too on, on feedback and whatnot. Um, there's more information on the targets at the website you can see right here, rimfiresteel.com. And on that note, and in the spirit of disclosure, yes, uh, I make them and I do uh, make a profit off of them, but that's certainly not my intention of, of sharing this with you guys. Uh, but I do want to be straightforward and open about that. Um, so I'll leave it at that on the, uh, on the plugging front, if you will. And uh, it should be a good little series. I think uh, what I'm excited about is to show you guys how I use my shop on a more um, higher level as I move the job around from different machines. But I'm really excited too, because as it grew from making one or two to actually producing these things in a, in a volume format, um, I've made some cool fixtures. And uh, I don't have a ton of experience with welding fixtures, so that's been a lot of fun, making fixtures for the Whitney Punch Press, uh, for the Torchmate, for the Tormach, etc. So. Um, at the end of this video, there's a little teaser of the fixtures. I'll go through them, though, on the future videos as we actually use them. Um, for now, though, let's uh, take a look at the CAD model, some of the Torchmate software, and then we'll hop over and uh, start ripping up a plate with the Torchmate 4x4 plasma cutter. Here is the Alibre assembly file for the target design. Um, oddly enough, I don't actually use this uh, a lot for the design, uh, but rather, as, or, or rather, I don't use it as a... Uh, final representation of exactly the design, but rather it's sort of my testing and sounding board for ideas as this thing has sort of evolved over the past, uh, you know, call it year or so. I continue to tweak the design, whether it's for functionality or improvements as I've increased the production of these things. So you can see on the main plate here, for instance, in the beginning, I was self fixturing with these little Mickey Mouse ear cutouts, uh, which is inefficient because you had to machine those on the CNC mill, but 
made sense before I built, say, fixtures for it. And I've done different, uh, experimented with different target shapes, but uh, just so you get that general idea um, in a Libre. And uh, I'll show you uh, before we, or when we hop over to Torchmate CAD, I'll show you one of the uh, quirks or tricks I've had to find to get these uh, files in between each other. Uh, but that gives you a general idea of what it is. And it's very helpful. For instance, one of the things I've changed is I used to mount the, uh, um, the hit target flag on the outside of the post, and that's uh, not really practical. So now what I do is I mount it on the inside. I didn't actually change the CAD file, but you can see the other target ear right here has room for that 100 thou piece of steel in between the two, whereas this one is would not because it was designed to go on the other side. So you get the idea. Uh, likewise, it's been helpful to design the reset bar. A lot of tweaking in the design and perfection of getting that to uh, reset correctly, to feel right, pull right, uh, and, and work functionally out in the field. So here are the Torchmate CAD files that I use. And we'll hop over to the plasma after this uh, and, and take a look at these being cut. Um, I try to be pretty aggressive with my plate usage without having nesting software. So this is the design I've come up with, which is also helpful because uh, as you can see, the majority of these are one for one, which is important for, in other words, for every target bracket I need, which is what I call, oh, I gotta break the uh, path here. Every one of these I call the target bracket. You need a target as well. Uh, this particular batch I'm running, I've got, I'm catching up. I've got some extra discs, so I'm going to cut 10 dedicated target plates like so. I'm at the point where uh, I probably do want to invest in auto nesting software, which uh, you can do via an upgrade to the CAD software from their Lite to Pro version, which is, I think, six or seven hundred dollars, quite a bit. Uh, there's also a website I've been intrigued by called MyNesting.com. In fact, let me see if I can pull that up here. Um, I, they sent, I somehow got on their mailer list and I tried it out and it was pretty cool. I'm sort of a pay to play if I recall. So uh, I thought I'd check them out and maybe throw some files in there. Um, anyways, that creates um, the parts you see here. And then I have a B file right now, which I use, which will create the main plates. And I just take up some extra room here with some other parts for it. So the other thing I wanted to show is how I get files in between a Libre and Torchmate CAD. Um, I would love it if someone tells me a better way to do this, but this is the way I've found. So we'll take this bracket and import it. So we'll edit in a separate window and that opens up the individual part. And then what we do is create a new drawing. And the important thing here is the scale of one to one. Usually it defaults to two or three to one. We only want the front view. OK, and now we have a drawing like so. And from here, you can just do file, export, sample drawing in the temp folder. And we will now go into Torchmate CAD. We'll just do a new file, import, sample drawing like so. So there it is. Now, if you want to, uh, there's lots of great videos on Torchmate Cat out there, but really quickly, if you want to edit this part, you can break the path, and that'll let me delete the circles, which I don't um, plasma cut. I punch those out with my Whitney punch press. Uh, cutting small circles is both inaccurate. There's a lot of tape or two of it. It's hard on piercing. It's hard on your plasma consumables. So I only cut the uh, outside shape like so. So that's uh, it. I guess it's not that bad, but uh, as you tweak parts, it's a hassle to create a new drawing, export a new file, etc. cetera. Um, so, but that's how it works. Okay, so I've got actually a sheet of quarter inch plate set up on my uh, Torchmate Growth Series 4x4. So let's just hop over there and watch, uh, watch this cut. I'll, I'll show a little bit in regular speed and then we'll probably speed her up to watch the whole plate go pretty quickly.
Okay, there we go. Plate is all cut up. You may have seen me grab some parts during the process. I try to be pretty careful and, and, and stay away, but sometimes they are, are popping up or sticking up. I always keep a bottle of uh, bucket of water nearby to throw them into because they are still hot. And as you can see right here, I actually did have a problem with this batch. The um, cutter drug right at this portion here in the top right which didn't move the plate, but caused the steppers to lose, to skip steps. I had to uh, go reprogram the remaining cuts and, and start over on that part. Definitely not fun, and it's one reason why I won't run this machine unattended, um, but didn't end up losing any more than a few uh, little portions of the plate. So on that note, I've got the top portion here, which I will separate with my oxyacetylene so I can use it, and I can cut out, I think, five or six target backer plates on it. We'll do that here in a follow-up video. So like I said, I told you I would end this video with some teasers of the fixtures I've made. So here you can see, these are mostly made out of aluminum and some steel. And these are all the different things I use for the Torchmate, Tormach, welding, Whitney punch, etc. So I'll walk through each one of these in the upcoming videos. Otherwise, uh, stay tuned folks, hope you've enjoyed. If you have, please comment below, like, uh, etc. It does mean a lot to me and take care and I will see you soon, thanks.